stories. You first met Sue Amundsen and Clint Miller nearly a year ago. We've been featuring their DNA journeys to find their birth parents. Now let's take a look back at each other's stories together as they follow similar paths to finding their birth mothers, starting with getting the results of DNA tests. This is 69% Great Britain, 8% um, Ireland. That's, that's interesting. A glimpse into his genetic makeup, but not to his family tree. And neither test website offered much in finding close relatives. But there was a list of three first cousins. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how far how, how far this takes me. I am 99.5 percent European. 23 and Me telling the adopted mother and grandmother from Sierra Vista what she's made up of. The ancestry results are almost identical. Sue now knows her DNA makeup, so she can help her daughters understand what they're made of. Initially, that's all Sue was after. She didn't have much interest in finding any relatives, but with the test results back. Her attitude begins to change. So according to this, I have 964 fourth cousins or closer. The ancestry results strike a chord with Sue. The list of potential matches is overwhelming. Suddenly, she's given a way to connect with close relatives, maybe even her birth parents. For me, this this doesn't look like it's like a a potential DNA match. It's just that it means that I have family out there that I didn't know. That night in late May, the security analyst got to work. Despite his extensive knowledge of online research, Clint hit several dead ends. More time passed with little progress in finding his mother. Clint started using old death records and searches of usernames, finally contacting a cousin through LinkedIn. She broke the news to me who, what my mother's name was. Within minutes, Clint was calling the woman he now believed to be his birth mother. I said, hi, Tony, this is Clint Miller. And I said, I think you're my birth mother. And she said, when's your, when was your birthday? And I told her my birthday. And she said, do you know what hospital, or do you know where you were born? And I said, I believe I was born in a naval hospital at Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, California. And then she said, I am your birth mother. With some hesitation, Sue looks closer into the likely DNA matches provided by Ancestry. But then she stops, again unsure of whether to proceed. She leaves the interview with possible leads, but plenty of uncertainty. But later that night, she emails a second name on the list of matches, and her DNA journey suddenly takes an unexpected twist. I mean, it's within 48 to 72 hours of me getting the results. Uh, she sent me a message and said, I think, um, I'm pretty sure I know who who your mother is. And then the next day, I had a email um, from my mother. Uh, her name is Helen. Uh, so from Helen, um, stating that based on the information, it does seem like I'm your mom. Sue spends the next few days emailing and then calling her biological mother. Sue learns about the abusive relationship that leads to her mother putting her up for adoption at birth. And then Sue learns that she has siblings. Um, I have three sisters. And then she said, I am your birth mother. From there, all of his questions were answered. His mom had just graduated high school and decided to give him up for adoption. She never kept in contact with his father. She never married or had any more kids. And they both have the same hazel eyes, as he discovered when she sent him her first ever selfie. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I actually woke up crying, and it hit me. I knew her voice. I have always known her voice. And yes, Clint also got to fulfill a strong desire he's had since he became an adult. Actually, the first thing I told her after she said that she was my mom, I told her, thank you. After 47 years, I was, you know, going to, you know, meet my, my mother. A total stranger sitting next to Sue on the three and a half hour flight helped calm her nerves. The woman also helped Sue with that long walk from the gate to the waiting area where Sue finally saw her mother and two of her three sisters. Oh my gosh, I've waited this long. I fought this hard um, and, and I did it. I don't think you can ever understand that kind of hug that she gave me. That was, it was a real hug and she was crying. And so for me, for me knowing that she was crying, knowing that, that this was hard for her, but this is what she wanted um, and that she loved me. She grabbed me and she told me she was sorry for, for putting me up and I told her, you don't need to be sorry for that because you, you did what you needed to do and I understand that. 
I appreciate that you're sorry, but you don't need to be. And then there was a full rainbow. And I just knew that, that it was supposed to be that way. It was supposed to be that way. So both Sue and Clint finding what they were looking for and each now have a relationship with their birth mothers. Now we're following another DNA journey. John Deloria is an editor here at K-Gun 9. He too is searching for his birth parents. We'll continue to follow his story in the coming weeks. Pat Paris, K-Gun 9 on your side.